Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Podcast Daily. It is Thursday, and it is time for a very special episode. I don't know if that's what we should call it or not, but that's what it's <laughs> going to be. That's Bill Landis, and I'm Austin Ward, and I think it's it's time. We have Bill Landis here. He's one of the very best that you'll you'll find covering basketball and Ohio State uh, basketball specifically. He's a great resource, so let's tap into it. Let's have a conversation about the Buckeyes who are sliding back near 500, uh, dropped a game on the road at Illinois on Tuesday night that I don't think anybody could have been that surprised by them losing, although you had some suspicion, Bill, that maybe they would win that one after the performance over the weekend. Uh, I don't mean to put that out there publicly, but that was what you <laughs> thought might happen uh, as we talked yeah. about it the other day. And I don't know. There's there's more interest as there as there is in this team when it goes negatively than there is positively, probably. And that's sort of where they're at right now. Yeah, I so I thought the the win they had against Iowa on Saturday could have been the start of something. It, it was it was the end of a five game losing streak, which was necessary in a, in a long time coming. And uh, Chris Holman had performed very well at Illinois uh, at, at Ohio State. I don't, I don't believe he had lost there prior to Tuesday night. Um, Illinois, while a pretty good and and very athletic team is is probably not quite as good as it's been the last couple of years so winning on the road in the big 10 is exceedingly difficult um so i didn't i didn't mean to suggest that like oh it's 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 a it's in the bag <laughs> guarantee win. but yeah, right. but uh i thought that they may may have found something in that game against iowa when maybe in hindsight it was more about the, the style of that game in particular iowa is not a overly physical defensive team it's it's more of a wide open game ohio state had been struggling offensively and, and that's the kind of team you want to play to to kind of get right offensively and they did in that game scoring in the 90s and then they came right back on on tuesday night and and scraped their way to to 60 and um that's probably the biggest issue with this team right now is they they just cannot score the basketball it's, it's actually kind of baffling to me because that's the one thing that chris Oldman seems to have been pretty good at pretty consistently uh, in his tenure, at least over the last three or four years, they've been one of the better offensive teams in the country in terms of efficiency, and they are not that right now. Um, they're really struggling on that end, and they're two and six in January, and we've sort of seen this movie before, and uh, I think people are, are, are clearly growing uh, increasingly tired of, of the January slips with this program, and, and understandably so. So I think people that have followed, you know, my work for a while, um, sort of know where I stand on this. And I, I had the conversation with Chris Holtman directly at the end of last year. We talked to him again before this season. It's not a mystery how I feel about Ohio State's basketball program and what it seems willing to accept from it. Um, I understand that not everybody is going to agree. And I also want to make it clear that my you know, hypothesis last year was that extending Chris Holtman was the problem, not that he deserved to be fired. I didn't think that he was going to be at the end of last year. Um, now there may be other issues by just letting him play out the string coming into this year that could have been caused and could have done long-term damage to the program. I don't know. Those are all interesting conversations to have. You and I both said around March of last year that Chris Holtman was not going to be fired. I knew that he was going to get an extension. That was the part that I took exception to because that was under the guise of, well, what happens if next year becomes a bit of a mess and you just guarantee that he's going to come back for another year after that? What what could be the long-term implications for that? Ohio State's about to find out right now because if you lose another one-and-done player and you're barreling down the tracks of not making the NCAA tournament at all at this point, I don't know what that means. The Schottenstein Center is already not very full on most <laughs> nights. Um, people are certainly frustrated with Chris Holtman. And even if Gene Smith is willing to say, this year, go play the young guys, take the lumps, and get ready for you know 2024, that doesn't mean that the fan base has to be on board with that. And that's where I think the real real risk lies, even, even with the understanding that there's a lot of season left and you're obviously not going to fire him in January. Yeah, you're not going to make any change now. Um, and and frankly, the way this is this is structured, I don't I don't 
think they're going to make a change after this. The The extension means that, that Ohio State would owe Chris Holtman the entirety of his salary if they were to get rid of him at any point um, over the over the course of that extension, which I think runs through the 2028 20, season, if I'm not mistaken now. Um, and I think at, at the end of this year, that'd be something in the neighborhood of like $20 million, maybe a little bit less than that. Um, I don't think Ohio State's the kind of place that's going to pay $20 million to make a basketball coach go away. Um, no, let, I don't know not. if they do it for a football coach, to be honest, um, but they're certainly not going to do it for a basketball coach. So, and honestly, I, I, I'm not even 100% sure that's the conversation to, to have at the moment, um, mostly because it's just, it's not going to happen. So why, why waste breath yeah, on it? That's but um, this is still not good enough. And, and, and the, the thing, like, there's been some heat, like over the last couple of weeks, because they lost five in a row, they're, they're kind of struggling in January again. And you hear some blowback from like national media folks who like Chris Holtman quite a bit, who who say, look, well, he's made a tournament every year. Be careful what you, what you wish for. And, and Thad Mata missed the, the tournament at the end of his last two seasons. And it's like, that's true. But that's what that's like. When did making the tournament become the baseline of success for the Ohio State basketball program? Like, I, I thought I thought that that had changed with the success that Thad Mata had. And even before Thad, like the coaches prior to him did more than that. I understand Ohio State does not have a decades long history of success with basketball. There's some There were some real lean years there, but in the last 30 years, they've been, or 25 maybe years, they've been pretty good. Um, and, and I don't know why all of a sudden the baseline of success is just make the tournament. And even if that's the case, and that's the world we're living in now, well, they look like they're not going to do that right now. So uh, that warrants criticism. And I, I don't like, part of it, I guess, is like, well, they're a young team and that's true. And, and I think you have to let a, a team that's going to play freshman as much as this team is playing freshman kind of take its lumps. Um, but on the other hand, I, I, I question the roster construction when you have a talented group of freshmen, but then you also appear to have the, uh, a group of veterans in place who don't quite seem like the right kind of guys to kind of shepherd a young group through the season. And that's maybe been the most disappointing thing about this stretch is that their older guys really uh, across the board have not played very well, um, really at all. And, and I don't think any of them played well uh, on, on Tuesday night at Illinois. They all, in fact, played quite bad. And I think that's the reason they lost that game. Yeah, he. I guess one of the issues that I have in evaluating Chris Holtman and what Ohio State needs, what it's going to do, where this program really sits right now, uh, compared to what it wants to be, like you could stare at pretty much anything he's done and make it into any argument you want. It's like a magic eye poster. You you've really got to mm -hmm. stare at it, and if you squint, you can see something over there or something very different over there. Like who knows? Like I think. Chris Holtman is a very good coach. I I have no doubt that he is a, a elite human being. He has proven to be uh, an above average to very good talent evaluator or recruiter, however you want to phrase that. All of those things are true. He has also at times been, uh, I don't know, made puzzling in game coaching decisions. Um, doesn't change the he's still a good human no matter what. I think that's probably fair to say. Um, but as you said, some of the roster construction when he's going out there and building it through record through recruiting or through the transfer portal hasn't made a ton of sense the way the pieces have fit together. So there's so much good and there's so much bad. You're making the tournament on the one hand and you're losing to a 15 seed on the other. It's just it's such a mixed bag that I wonder that's the thing for me that's like what merited the extension and how long are you willing to accept this? The, everybody always says, well, how do you know that you're going to get someone hundred percent better? You don't, you don't, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's the risk of, of hiring and firing somebody. But the, the body of work for Chris Holtman is certainly large enough now to make some sweeping assessments. And is he going to get to uh, a sweet 16 someday? Maybe. Is he going to get to a final four? I kind of doubt it. I think we'd know by now if that was possible. Uh, and, and again, I know that the NCAA tournament also isn't the only way to evaluate a coach, but that's why I have such a difficult time wrapping my mind around all of it, because you are still, you know, investing several million dollars a year into that. And I don't know that Ohio State's really coming close to getting a return on that. I, I don't know that they are either. And and you're right that that tournament success is not the only way to, to judge a, a coaching tenure, but like there's 
what 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 do we hear every year when when because we've had, this is not the first time we've had this conversation. We seem to have it at the end of most seasons because people are wanting more of Ohio State in, in the, when it comes to postseason play. And then yep. you hear like, oh well, he's won twenty games every year, and he and he makes the tournament every year. And those things are difficult. Like I don't I don't want to just like brush past that and say like whatever, who cares? There are a lot of coaches who don't do that year over year, and and I think Chris Holman does deserve uh, a modicum of credit for for doing that consistently. But it also kind of feels like it's maxed out. So, and and if and, and if it is, then what? Like, is this just is this what you want to be? And and clearly, I think Gene Smith believes that there is another level for Chris Holtman to tap into, and maybe there is. If you look at their the recruiting class that's on the floor now with these four freshmen and five, if you include Bowen Hardman, what they have coming in next year, uh, those two classes stacked up back to back are very good. Um, probably as good as Ohio State has done in successive recruiting classes. So if if you see that. And you want to convince yourself that like this program is going to, and I, I almost want to want to say like turn turn the corner and implies that they've been bad. They haven't been bad. They just sort of been like kind of meandering on like above average and and want to be better than that. Um, so, but if you think those two classes are are what's going to get you there, and you believe that Chris Holtman is the guy to get you there, like I I can understand that on one hand, but why you would tie yourself financially to that for? probably at least three more years before it becomes reasonable to do something about it um kind of kind of baffled me um especially when there were already i think three three years remaining on on that extension when he got it um i understand that that creates uncomfortable conversations in recruiting sometimes i also think that that tends to be overblown um and and ohio state probably could have had the same recruiting success with without doing that and without tying itself um to, to this coach with that, with that amount of money for you know five more years or eight more years whatever it is um right. It just doesn't, didn't. It didn't really quite line up for me. But um, if he had, you know, something better than I think the, his best finish in the Big Ten is what was it? Was, were they they were second his first year, but they haven't better than like fifth since then. Right. Um, they had the one year where they went to the Big Ten tournament championship, which was which was a nice run. But then it immediately ended with a loss to a 15 seed in the NCAA tournament. So like, great, it, you know, you got to the Big Ten or the NCAA tournament every year, and you won 20 games every year like what else there's there's just not there's not that other thing there that that makes bowing out early um more palatable than than it should be so there's just not there's not a a, a, a thing you can point to it's so like oh yeah that that's the reason why we're still bought in and that's the reason why we still have hope moving forward yeah i think that's why my nothing we can say now will change the fact that gene smith gave chris holtman that extension uh right it's it to your point earlier it's almost pointless to debate it because ohio state is is virtually certain to not fire him. That was my issue with it moving forward is that, okay, you're stacking up these recruiting classes. You don't want to disrupt them. But not only does that mean that you're letting this season go by with no stakes for your head coach, but I think probably in a lot of ways that means that, that that's the case for next year too because you'll mm -hmm. say, well, there's still a lot of freshmen on this team. There's still a lot of inexperience. Let's give them time. And, you know, if if another one pops and then you lose another – key member of that class after one year what does that mean for the for that third season playing into yeah. the future like you're constantly playing catch up here and there's still never been a marquee moment that tells you what that peak potential is for a chris holtman team that's the part that i just don't understand after six years you're still betting on on the come and the future like that part i can't understand because E again, even if Gene Smith believes that the ceiling is still up there and Chris Holtman can still elevate and take Ohio State to that, it's happening at the same time that many people are losing interest and refu and not refusing. They're just not they're not going to games. They're not supporting it, and can say that it's a vocal minority of fans that that want Chris Holtman out. I don't really think that it's that much of a, a minority at this point. And that's the risk that that's the gamble that Gene Smith is playing with here. And I have a hard time seeing how he's going to win it. it. This is so I've been covering Ohio State basketball for like f seven ish years, like the last few years of that and, and all of Chris's tenure. Um, he, this is bordering on like the end of Thad's tenure when like no one cared what they were doing. Like people were just done. Um, it's not quite there yet because I think I think this freshman group still is is intriguing enough that that people kind of want to watch and see how they develop and and maybe that's this team's saving grace and i like i like that group quite a bit um mm -hmm. whether or not i know is bryce sensible going to be here next year my guess is probably not um i think even even though he has his struggles defensively he's probably still going to be a first round draft pick if he were to come out um 
you still have a core of Bruce Thornton and, and Felix Akpar and Roddy Gale that, that I think can be like cornerstone players for your program for multiple years. And that, and that's exciting, but only, only to a certain extent, it, you know, it, it's not Ohio state is, is not a fan base that like wants to wrap its arms around like a developmental team that, that might be good two years down the road, um, especially in the sixth year of a head coach's tenure. Like, I, I don't know why it, it, it should have been like Chris Holman inherited a program that needed a reset. Um, and it felt like he got the reset. I mean, now he's getting another reset. Like, I don't know. Why, I don't know why you get two. Uh, getting getting a second one six six years in um, just seems seems a little odd to me. And and maybe you chalk some of that up to uh, like losing Malachi Branham before you thought you would. And maybe this team looks very different if if Malachi is here. They they probably do. Um, and I understand that's difficult to navigate, but that's also kind of the way college basketball is now. Roster roster management is is as difficult as it's ever been, and, and coaches get paid a lot of money to get it right. And um, I'm I'm not so sure. At least I'm, I'm I'm skeptical at this point. I think with a lot of evidence that that Ohio State has it right at the moment because um, the older players on the roster that are playing quite a bit and playing important roles just just aren't getting it done right now. Like to 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 win a game like they won against Iowa, and then to have players and and coaches afterwards say like, oh yeah, the practices after that weren't very good, and that's when we lost to Illinois. Like, I don't, how does that happen? How do you not have the leadership in place to to build on top of a win like that and, and try to get it even if you even if you played well and lost at Illinois that would have meant something but they just came out and, and laid an egg against Illinois that frankly I, I don't think Illinois played that well that probably wasn't Illinois a game um and but Ohio State came out and probably played like it's D game after after winning when it should have been um building on top of something and it couldn't do it yeah those were uh troubling comments to say the least uh and and whether you want to whether anybody wants to assign that blame to the coach who's ultimately responsible or the veteran players who should be setting the tone and leading. I mean, that's, we could debate that all day. Nobody knows for sure. You can probably just chalk some of it up to both. It doesn't really matter. Also, they, they failed the test when it mattered, mm -hmm. but they still have, you know, five, six weeks to go here, Bill. So the schedule is more challenging. The later you get into the big 10 season, we know that that it's a grind. Ohio State's sitting here, what, a couple games over 500, uh, three and six in the Big Ten. It's a steep mountain. Is there, what do you expect is going to happen? I'm not, I wasn't, I was going to say, can they turn it around? Is there optimism they can do that? I don't, I don't know that that's a fair question. Like, mm -hmm. what's, what is the next step here? Yeah, I mean, not not avoiding what happened after the Iowa game, like find finding a way to to sort of come correct on on the night of of your game, like to they go on the road at, at Indiana on Saturday night, and if they come out and play the way they played at Illinois, they're probably going to get their doors blown off by Indiana uh, in in Assembly Hall. So um, they have uh, seven of their remaining games, I believe, are at home. Um, and the Big Ten, maybe with the exception of like Purdue, is very good. I think Rutgers is pretty good. And then everyone else, like from like three through honestly like ten or eleven, are kind of all the same in my mind. Like there's 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 quite a bit of parity in the Big Ten. So um, I don't know actually how wide the gap is between like the third place team and where Ohio State is at the moment. I, I don't I don't know if that means they're more likely to to go on a little of a streak here or less likely because it's going to be tough <laughs> night night in and night out. Maybe it's the latter. Um, but they have enough home games remaining that if they can hold serve at home. And then maybe steal one on the road and and find a way somehow to finish 500 in league play. That's probably enough to get them into the in, into the NCAA tournament with how good that the Big Ten is. They have a um a little bit a little bit of an albatross of a loss probably against Minnesota, who, who is not a very good team. Although I guess they're playing marginally better than they were earlier in the year. They don't have bad losses outside of that. They still have a couple of of decent wins. So, like, not all is lost. I understand if, everyone, if anyone listening to this is like, yeah, like, that's all true. It's out there, but they're not going to do it. Like, that's fine. I'm, I'm not saying they're going to do it either. <laughs> all, all I'm saying is they have the opportunity. And um, I think it's possible, like, to to lose the way they lost on Tuesday and then to talk about what they talked about, which is, you know, we didn't prepare the right way. We didn't have the right mindset. Maybe that was the, the kick in the teeth they needed to – finally refocus i don't know I, I would i would hope that losing five in a row at any point <laughs> along that stretch would, would do that and it didn't didn't really seem to so i'm not i'm not optimistic that this will either but if it does then then there's an opportunity for them but like you said it's it's a pretty steep hill to to climb to even sniff 500 and if they're not doing that then then this is going to be a team that i think does not make the ncaa tournament 
Yeah, I was going to say they had five other opportunities mm-hmm. before last weekend to think about that. And it's, I mean, th- the stat that you were throwing out with how long it had been for five game losing streaks for this program, like, I think sometimes it's presented as like this super dark history for Ohio State basketball that it's never achieved anything and that Chris Holtman has lifted it out of the gutter and up to this consistent perch where you know they're going to be winning. I like, I just don't really buy that. Like Ohio State basketball is more uh, volatile with peaks and valleys, but it certainly has the potential, as we saw in the, th- in the early days of Thad Mana, of them going to Final Fours and competing for national championships. That's It's not as if, as if this program is some plucky underdog. It still has all the resources in the world. Everything, maybe not everything like for like that works for football works for basketball, but Ohio State's not like cutting corners and the fan base mm-hmm. is not going to completely ignore winners where they can't recruit to Columbus. Like, none, they, all, all the opportunity is still there. That's the part that is is always so crazy. Again, you said it. We talk, we talk about this every year in March, basically. Uh, what do you want out of it? Like, Ohio State can win at a much higher level. I, I'm not going to apologize for believing that they can. I, nor do I think you should, and 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 nor do I think anyone who expects more from Ohio State basketball should apologize for that. Like with within the realm of of reason, like you know, Ohio State's not going to be a program that's in the Final Four every year, right? Um, but but the 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 truth of it is too, like Chris Holtman's three predecessors, uh, I think by like the third or fourth year of their tenure had all either like won the Big Ten or gotten to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament or won a Big Ten conference tournament. And Chris Holtman's done none of those things and we're in year six. And even if you allow for like, well, that was going to be really difficult with the roster rebuild that had to happen at the beginning of his tenure, which I think is fair. At, at this point, I don't think we should still be saying that. And and the fact that we're still saying that and we're also staring at a season that looks like it's going to be the first time that he doesn't make the NCAA tournament, um, this makes me feel like the program is not in a tremendous place right now. So they have they have time to, to, to turn it around, as, as we've said. Maybe they will. Um, I don't know. Maybe they, they have they have a collection of talent that I think can turn it on and be very good for, for a, a prolonged stretch. I think, and we saw that prior to this two and six month of January, they played some really good basketball um, before mm-hmm. the turn, but before the turn of the, of the calendar, um, which they've done in years prior. Um, and I don't, I don't know if I have a lot of faith in them to, to do it, but the, I think there are enough pieces personnel wise to, to get it done. If, if things start clicking for, for multiple players, it's just like, I don't know what's the percentage chance that that happens based on what we've seen <laughs> up to this point. Not, not particularly high. I would, <laughs> We were so close to just providing a dose of optimism for the Ohio State basketball fans out there, and then you dump that bucket of water right on it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not gonna. I, I don't want to feed people BS. You know, like I, I, yeah, I, 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 in the past covering this team, have at times maybe come off as telling people that I think their expectations have been unreasonable. Um, I don't feel that now. I like I I understand. I feel the frustration. I understand the frustration. I feel that it's that it is it is warranted. Does that mean that they need to kick the head coach to the curb in January? No, um, it's not going to happen anyway. It's not going to happen at the end of this year. But uh, it's perfectly reasonable, I think, to ask more of of this program than what it's giving fans right now. Yeah, I, I think you're 100 percent correct about that. We'll see what happens. There's still a lot of basketball left ahead of Ohio State. And if it gets better, maybe we'll talk about it more. I can't guarantee it, but maybe we will. I'd love to. I'd love it. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Maybe you kind of you, you all can let us know uh, how much you want it, and then we'll gauge that from here as Ohio State <laughs> uh, gets ready for the last five six weeks of the regular season, and then whatever postseason might exist after that. Of course, we're also going to have uh, the usual off season football coverage, and we're going to be diving into more position previews and getting ready for. Uh, spring practice in March and everything beyond that. But uh, you all know that that's why you hopefully have been enjoying the podcast daily uh, with me and Bill Landis uh, and Jeremy Birmingham as well. We're going to be back for more tomorrow as we always will. It'll be a freaky Friday episode. Uh, We hope to see you there. We'll talk to you later.